All right, welcome everyone to our next episode of Touching Base. My name is Eric Arnold, and I'm going to be your host this evening. I've got Andrew Inc., Andrew Nall, and a special guest, Maryland point guard Eric Hayes, joining us today. Eric, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Real good. Good. Now, uh, Eric, we really pride ourselves, uh, you know, in this podcast of asking some of the top-notch, hard-hitting questions, and so we want to start this thing off by asking you, um, how is your bracket doing? not good i got gonzaga left that's about it really i had them winning it all uh i had them beating illinois in the final obviously we saw how that went um i had texas going pretty far i love their talent and you know that didn't shake out very well either so i think it's it's pretty impossible to pick these things because i tried going in picking picking upsets and then the other the other upsets that i didn't pick happened and it's just it's impossible to me just out of curiosity, which of those upsets did you have? Because I had a bunch of them out there as well, and I'll feel a whole lot better if you say some of the same names. Oh, man. Well, I, I got most of them wrong. I picked, like, UC <laughs> Santa Barbara. I picked, like, I did get Ohio the first round. I mean, I got I got a few, but most of them I got I got completely wrong. All right, same boat. All right, good to yeah. know. <laughs> and, and actually, uh, I think, Andrew, uh, you're the one who watches the least amount. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the thing is I was uh, peacocking on uh, whatever the day was Friday evening or Saturday morning. Uh, I was telling these guys like uh, I'm most removed from college uh, basketball I was real big into it back in uh, back in the day when I was still in uh, college myself. But uh, I've kind of stepped back from it. So I know about the least uh, of what's going on with, with college basketball this year. Yet somehow uh, day one, I was 13 and three uh, on my bracket. Uh, so I uh, kind of like, you know, dancing around in front of these guys a bit. Uh, unfortunately, it has not shaken out as well since then. Uh, but I just uh, as somebody that's played in the tournament, kind of get your sense of uh, what's wild. these are some wild things and wild results that are playing out this year. Um, what do you think is causing that? Is this a COVID thing? Is it, um, you know, how how did we get here and where are we going from here in the tournament? Well, I mean, I think I think I don't think COVID has too much to do with it. Uh, obviously, some teams had, you know, longer layoffs than others, and some people recovered more than others did. Um, VCU, <laughs> what's that? VCU might argue with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was that was a shame that they didn't get to get to play. Um, but you know, maybe Oregon was a little bit fresher in their next game, and you could see that, uh, and it really really showed. Um, but I think some of the upsets. I mean, I think a lot of teams are just. There's a lot of good players out there. There's a lot of good teams. There's much more parity than, than you think. And, you know, in, in any one game, I mean, you can see, I mean, if, if teams are coached really well and have a good style play and got smart players and, I mean, you can beat anybody really. I mean, there's nobody that's, that's unbeatable. You know, I've seen a lot of the, a lot of the teams that are losing. I think I might've said something on Twitter about this, about like, you know, a lot of these teams, with a lot of talent and kind of relying on, you know, isolations and, and ball screens stuff's not stuff's not working that well in, in the <laughs> tournament and uh it's kind of getting expo exposed uh, as someone that would like to impress my friends and or family members with my um suspect college basketball knowledge who should i be crowing about going forward in the next couple weeks who do you like going forward um of ba based on uh, what's standing well i mean because is pretty hard to hard to beat right now i mean they're looking sure. really good um should be an interesting matchup they have i think uh you know, even Michigan, I mean, without, without livers, they're looking, looking pretty good. I think that that's, that's probably my favorite matchup of the, of the sweet 16 is them in Florida state. I think it's gonna be a really good matchup. Florida state's got a ton of height, a ton of athleticism as always. Um, but I mean, Baylor on the other side is looking really good. I, I think, right. I think right now Gonzaga and Baylor are kind of uh, looking to, to go head to head in, in the finals. Yeah. 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 They were yeah. supposed to play earlier in the year and then that got postponed. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we, hopefully we can see it, you know, later. Um, now you watched, I'm, I'm assuming you watched the, the game the other night. Um, you know, it, it didn't go the way that we were kind of hoping, um, you know, as Maryland fans. Um, just what are your thoughts? What, what do you think happened in that game? Well, they made a lot of threes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, still making threes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, with, with a team like that, I mean, it's, I was thinking about this earlier. It's just like the amount of threes they take and a lot of, a lot of them are, I mean, to any regular person would be bad shots um, and quick shots. And, uh, you know, with, with their style of play, that's just, that's how they want to play. And that's, that's what they've done all year. And it's kind of hard psychologically when you're defending that to kind of think like, Oh, he's not going to shoot that. Cause it's a, you know, there's 25 seconds left on the shot clock and he's three feet behind the line and, you know, he's not going to shoot that, but you know, they, they let it fly and, 
you know, they can, they can knock them down like they it showed last out. night. Yeah. And, and w- w- once they start making those, I mean, without a versatile big that can get out and cover and protect the rim, I mean, it's, it's real hard. It's like, I, I kind of, it's kind of like guarding Steph Curry. Like he shoots it so deep, you got to get out there and cover him. Then it makes it easy for him to get to the basket and everybody got to help. And then you're kicking the wide open guys. It's just uh, once that, once that flurry starts happening, it's really hard to recover and hard to, hard to make up for. Were you surprised by the uh, rebounding, the offensive rebounding by Alabama? I mean, I guess a little bit. I mean, normally we hold our own pretty good with, even with the small lineup. Um, Like I said, I mean, a lot of these shots that they're taking are going to be long rebounds and may not be as, the same as, you know, as a regular team that you're playing, uh, a lot more longer rebounds and those guys you know, were crashing the boards hard. So it was a little bit of a surprise, but, you know, stuff, that type of stuff happens. Yeah. Now, after the game, Turgeon had the, the comment about the Final Four, you know, we're not a Final Four team. Um, and some people got an open arms about that. Some people are saying, well, he's speaking <laughs> facts. You know, did, did you hear that quote? Did you have any thoughts on it? I didn't hear that. I mean, I guess he's referring to this this particular team, or yeah, after the game, and and I'm I'm not quoting it perfectly here, but uh, essentially he said, uh, you know, come on guys, this wasn't a Final Four team. Uh, to one of the reporters after the game, um, you know, there are a bunch of other teams that would rather be where we're at. Um, you know, there's 300 some teams in, in NCAA's. We made it to the round of 32. This mm-hmm. is supposed to be a um, a rebuilding year for us, um, but some people really focused in on that. Well, what do you mean this isn't a Final Four team? Is that encouraging to say to your players? You know, is that the kind of uh, message you want to send to them? Um, and so I don't know if it's being taken out of context or you know, you you yeah. work with them. I mean, I think I think it is being taken out of context. I mean, you you can go into every game thinking you you know you're, you're going to win. You know, you don't go to any game saying oh like we got no chance here. But I mean, deep down, I mean, you kind of know like look at the team, look at you know other teams' talent and, and size athleticism compared to you know maybe what we had this year and it, and going into the year nobody really expected us to make the tournament nobody really you know, it was supposed to be a really down year and I think uh you know making it to the second round I mean was a, a great accomplishment for this for this group and I don't think they have anything to you know to be hold their heads down and no at all this season was, was there you, anyone you could you remember? Kind of tell me how it was was there anyone that you can remember feeling that way against Say that, say that again. You were saying that you there were a couple times you can look at the other team and look at their size and look at their talent and, and realize it's going to be, a, you know, a, a tough night. Um, you know, obviously you're going in to win. Is there any team that you can remember, you know, walking into a game saying, man, this is going to be a tough night? With this current this current team or when, when I was, When you were playing. Oh, when I was playing? Oh, uh, yeah, there's a few. I mean, <laughs> but when, when our, our teams, for some, some reason, we, we were able to kind of every now and then, you know, beat teams like that. I mean, I think – Three out of four years, we beat the uh, the national champion. You know, whether right. it was Carolina with Hansborough, and they probably had six pros on that team. <laughs> the Duke had probably three or four pros on one team. Uh, I remember we played my sophomore year. We played uh, UCLA up in St. Louis, um, and I mean they had Kevin Love, they had that Westbrook? Westbrook, they had Westbrook, they had Darren Collins. I mean they had another guy who played in the NBA. Uh, in in, in Batu or something what I forgot what his name is but, um I mean going in that game like obviously our, our mindset was to win the game but we looked on the other side during warm-ups and we're like well let's try to keep, go. keep it close here yeah we didn't do that but um yeah there's, there's certain games where you go into where you kind of you kind of know deep down that it's probably not going to end end well <laughs> fair enough now, uh, going back to some of the COVID things, they're offering a, like a fifth year of eligibility. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think there's anybody in the Maryland's team that would benefit from that? Or would you have done that if you had another year to, to kind of play college basketball? I probably, if, if, it, if I was in the situation, I probably would come back for another year. I mean, I'm, I wasn't like some lottery pick or, or is going to make a lot of money right out of, right out of college. And I feel like, you know. Lithuania uh, wasn't paying the big bucks? No, not, not exactly. I'm much okay. rather <laughs> college park uh, trying to, you know, maybe build on what we did the previous year and, and get a little bit further and maybe win a national championship. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it just depends on your situation. I mean, if, if, if you think you've got potential to, to make, make money professionally, you know, maybe you leave. If not, um, I think it may be a good idea to, to come back. I just, I'm kind of confused on how, you know, the scholarships match up with, you know, who you're bringing in and how that, how that all is going to work. I'm kind of confused on that, that aspect of it. 
Do you think Daryl will come back? It's a good question. I, I don't know. I, I, I think he might. Um, I think that would be a, you know, a good thing for him, not only him on his career, but I think for the team, obviously having a, a guy like him back who can be, you know, kind of another, he is the heart and soul of the team. Right. Um, we'll have a lot of guys back from, from this year's squad. I mean, depending on what Wiggins does, um, you know, hopefully he, he comes back, but you know, the way he's been playing. Yeah. His last game didn't, didn't yeah, I mean, cause you, of him coming back. You yeah. Know. You wouldn't, you wouldn't blame him for testing the waters and seeing what's, what's going on and, and possibly it seems to be the realistic option, you know, like to at least go test it and see what's out yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. He'll do that uh, and see what, what people are saying. And if, you know, he grades out well and he thinks that, you know, he'll get drafted at some point, then he'd probably leave. But if not, maybe it'd be a good time for him to come back and kind of solidify what he was doing the second half of the year and possibly, you know, make a run for like, you know, a big 10 player of the year type can, uh, candidate. Right. Now you mentioned playing, you know, overseas and playing, you know, Lithuania and Spain. Um, and we were talking about that a little bit before the show. Um, and you said, you know, the, the money's not exactly great over there. What, what is that experience like? We're, we're never are, we lost our eligibility we're you know we haven't we've been to, you know tournament games. i never had any never had any <laughs> you know oh, so, yeah. so just if we were i mean to me that still seems kind of like a, a a really fun dream scenario you know um i've talked to some friends who have done it and they said it's it's not a dream scenario um <laughs> but you were a little bit better than they were so i'm curious about your thoughts I mean, it's, it just depends where you are what league you're in what country you're in uh you know some some leagues and some countries that you're you're going to the management and trying to beg, beg for your check. And there's others that, you know, are, you know, making a lot of money like in Spain and, you know, the ACB and all the big, big leagues out there. I mean, guys are making great livings and probably better livings that they can make in the NBA, uh, honestly. Um, so it really just depends on, on where you are. And for myself, you know, I was in Spain, I was in the second division right under uh, the ACB and I made decent money, but not enough to like, you know, life-changing money or anything. Um, and it's really a, really grind, you know, you're out there, you know, a season probably runs six to eight months, depending on how well you do, you know, you come back here, guys got to, you know, train for a couple months and you find out where you're going next. You go back over there for another six months or so. And it's kind of a, a weird lifestyle that I really didn't, really didn't enjoy. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the experience and it was, it was a great experience, but I didn't enjoy the kind of back and forth and moving around and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't blame you. Uh, I don't, uh, Andy, I think no. you asked about the, uh, the shirts. Oh, yeah. So there's been a lot of this hashtag uh, not NCAA property shirts going around. What are your thoughts on that whole whole like experience with that or your thoughts on that being as far as what the NCAA has, kind of its property, so to speak? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, for myself, I was – I've always just – I was growing up just – dreamed of playing college basketball. I didn't really care, you know, if I was getting paid or if, you know, I was supposed to be getting paid or they're using my image on a poster or something or anything like that. I just didn't, didn't really care. Um, but I, I can, I can, I can see from like the bigger time players that are, you know, on the commercials and, and, and making a lot of money for their schools. Um, you know, I, I can see that side as well, where they think, you know, maybe, maybe we should be getting a piece of this and, or, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. I, I, I'm kind of old school in that where I just think like, you know, you're getting education, you're getting exposure, you're playing at a high level and, 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 and getting an opportunity to play at a level where if you play well enough and you can get to play professionally. Um, that's kind of my take on, it. I don't, I'm not do really you, strong, strong either way. Say that again. You need to play at the college level. That was what you were getting your payment was and you were okay with that. Yeah. I mean, I, I was fine with that. I mean, I, I got, I think I got a, I got a check from, the EA sports thing. Um, <laughs> That's right. For being, for being in, I think I got like a thousand dollars or something for being in the video game. Okay. Which nice, but I mean, it's not like, um, I wasn't on the cover or anything. I'm sure whoever's on the cover. Might now, got they're out, bringing but. back NCAA football. Do you hope they bring back NCAA basketball as well? Oh yeah. I, I used to love that game. I used to play okay. that game all day. Um, <laughs> that and NCAA football. So I really do wish they bring that back. Uh, so switching back a little bit to, just to March Madness, um, that's it's such a it's a, you know if you rank um, kind of sporting events, playoff events, whatever. Obviously, NHL hockey playoffs are up there high, um, but March Madness is probably what top three or so of like you know major sporting events. Number one. Stay together. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
that's debatable. You you know, watch <laughs> watch four playoff uh, hockey series, seven games, okay. Um, and then you know, Braden Holtby standing on his head. Okay, that's a, I digress. Um, what's that March Madness experience like as a player? Right, you got to go through that. Um, you know, at least once. Um, yeah, I think probably a couple times. What what talk to what's that experience like? Um, you know, the intensity, the the matchups, the kind of the the, the whirlwind um, that it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's something that like, you know, my, like myself growing up, I, mean, I always dreamed of playing in Maryland. I always dreamed of playing in the city tournament. You know, I grew up watching the teams that, you know, won the championship and guys before them that were getting to lead eights and final fours and something you want to do. And, uh, you know, when you get there, it's kind of, you're kind of, kind of in all the first time you get there just because it's, you know, that's the big dance and it's, it's, it's made a really big deal throughout the country. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I was real fortunate to be in it three out of four times. Our, my sophomore year, we kind of, we kind of blew it and we're kind of left outside the bubble there. Um, but uh, it's just a, it's a spe- spectacle, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's winter go home and there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of scenarios like that uh, throughout the year or in any sport, one game scenarios. We were talking a little bit beforehand, um, you know, with Maryland switching over to the Big Ten. Um, and I know that, you know, and I, I'm really not trying to be rude or anything or disrespectful with this, but I know like Michigan State was a tough, you know, uh, situation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I, I watched a little bit of the clip right before, you know, you came on and, and I know it was hard for me. So I can only imagine you seeing that. And now you've got to see them, you know, two times a year. Um, you, you know, does, does that, do you think Michigan State's a potential rival? Do you think the new stuff going on with Jawan Howard's going to make Michigan a rival? Uh, really, since you know Maryland's joined the Big Ten, they haven't really had um, kind of like what you had with Duke and North Carolina, even Virginia. You know, do they have a rival yet, or are they is there one brewing? You think? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that may be the them and they may be the closest thing to, that we have to rival, just because of the history of you know what we've what we've been. We played each other. I think my my entire career, we played them maybe three or four times, and I think the only game we lost was that one. <laughs> that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think them, I think, you know, obviously like Penn State and Rutgers are like the geographically the ones that probably should be. And for some reason we can't. I don't want Penn State and Rutgers. We can't, we, we can't, seem, we can't seem to beat Penn State, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think Michigan State right now, you know, and if, you know, I don't think after this year I and mean, anything's going to really, really come about with the Michigan thing with Juwan Howard. I mean, I don't, I don't see that bubbling over to the next 10 years being some, some rivalry between the two coaches, but. Uh, I'd say Michigan State right now, just from the history, um, is probably where it's at. All right. Before we let you go, um, I, I, I have to ask. Um, I was reading some old articles um, about you and uh, your old roommate, Gravis. Um, you know, they were calling you guys the odd couple. Um, I don't really want to know. I don't, I don't need to know a whole lot of stuff. But just what was that like? Was he, like, stealing your hot pockets and stuff? Or, <laughs> like, I mean, was it ever, was everything the media kind of tried to make it to be? I mean, I know that it seemed like you guys had a really genuine friendship. Um, I'm assuming that's still the case. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, we, what was that like? I mean, like if he did well on a test, did he go nuts like he did, like when he got drafted and that kind of stuff? Or was he pretty low key behind the scenes? No, nah, he, he, what you saw on the court was basically what he was like, uh, you know, <laughs> off the court. Uh, he didn't really hide his emotions too much. Uh, I was kind of the opposite, kind of the yin and the yang, I guess you would say. Um, and uh, yeah, but no, he's it, what, what you see out on the court. You know, his personality is 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 big on the court, and he's also that that type of person off the court. He just he's a great guy. I mean, we've 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 stayed in touch. I mean, I know he's living in Miami right now, and I'm trying to get some plans to go down there and see him at some point. But um, yeah, we stay in touch, and uh, we've been great friends since since college. So it's been. Can you tell us any stories, you know, about, I mean, just about your guys' relationship? Do you, did you ever have to tell them to turn off the Venezuelan music? Or <laughs> did you, uh, you know, I, I don't know, ever, you know, get tired of him stealing stuff from me or anything? Huh? No, I don't think he never, he never stole anything from me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, uh, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, it's, there's a lot of different stories out there, but probably, probably not uh, mm-hmm. ones that I should share. Uh, I mean, you're more than welcome. You can. <laughs> we, don't, we don't mind. You know? Yeah. I know. But, all right. Well, I don't know if if anybody else has anything, but uh, honestly, Eric, I mean, I, I was kind of telling them beforehand. I think I told you, you know, beforehand, uh, I was a huge fan of yours. Um, you know, my, my dad and I didn't miss a game. That was kind of a huge bonding thing between my dad and I. 
was awesome. always Maryland basketball games. And so uh, I have a lot of memories, um, you know, of, of watching you play. Uh, I mean, I, I really do appreciate your time uh, coming on here and uh, talking with us and giving us some insight um, into a side of life that we never have a chance to live. Um, you know, we're jealous, but we are also very, very appreciative. Um, you know, do you have anything? I mean, I know, like I said, we we're talking beforehand, you're out in, uh, you know, Nashville. Um, you know, do you want to talk about the company you're working for? Or do you want to throw out a, a Twitter handle or anything? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, well, first of all, I can relate to that because, I mean, me growing up with my dad, that's all we did was watch college basketball and watch Maryland games. I mean, we didn't miss a game. So uh, I can really relate. Scott, too, right? Kendall, your dad, uh, got, he's got a court named after him, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, he does. He was, he was, uh, he was my coach basically, you know, from when I started playing organized basketball, at like seven years old, all the way up to through high school. Uh, so he coached my AU, coached high school. Uh, you know, he's a great coach. Um, and, uh, he retired, uh, when I graduated to come watch all my games. And, uh, I think my, my mom and dad might've missed maybe two games my entire career home in a way. Um, so that was pretty, pretty special that I got to Absolutely. share all that stuff with them. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it was. Um, well, I was going to ask my man down here uh, about the caps this year. Um, All right. Yeah. I love, I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big hockey fan. Uh, yes. um, what do you, what are your thoughts so far? Yeah. So it was a, it was a rough start. I think they were just having a hard time getting themselves together uh, defensively the, the first uh, quarter of the year, I guess. Uh, obviously the last uh, few weeks have been on a tear of like eight, eight, seven of eight or eight of nine, something like that. And they're looking really good. The goals against is down. So uh, really good goaltending from, from both guys. Uh, you know, I thought, I thought they kind of weathered the storm when the four Russians were out with, uh, with the COVID and um, you know, a Vitek Vanacek coming up kind of out of nowhere playing, you know, back to back to back to back for, you know, 13, 14 games. He, he did everything he could, I thought, um, but yeah, they're, they're rounding into form for sure. And it's starting to look good. Yeah, I was, I was, in the beginning of the year, I was like, man, is, is, is the window closed? Like, it, <laughs> yeah, it looked like it was, it was shut, shut closed there early on. And then all of a sudden they start playing real well. I'm like, well, they may, yeah. may have, to have a chance this year to, to do something if they. Yeah, they had nice balance for a while where you had the guys like the bottom six were scoring pretty good. Uh, you know, a couple, a couple nights, basically, you know, two out of three nights, you had the bottom six, you know, putting a goal or two in. Um, you know, and a guy like um, they, they made some good like value acquisitions and a guy like Connor Sherry, that's just like, mm -hmm. I think was their leading goal scorer uh, or, you know, number two goal scorer for a spell there while, uh, you know, while the big guns were out. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, I've started to worry that, you know, they were they had that nice balance, but you weren't getting that production from the top six, right? You weren't getting the Ovi, you weren't getting the Oshie, the Wilson, the there's Verona. There's a lot of You're talks of Ovi being done and yeah, well, <laughs> and now that stuff's picking back up, right? Like V's getting Dave, you know, V's getting dangerous. Um, Nick, I think, is their leading goal star right now. And, uh, you know, V was like seven goals in six games or something like that. So, yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a break here for the four days. So, but hopefully they stay hot. Agreed. Agreed. Hockey, hockey playoffs is probably my second uh, behind, <laughs> behind March. Madness, so. It's an honorable mention for me, but um, <laughs> Ovechkin. You know, I'm not huge in hockey, but Ovechkin has a chance to get 800 gold. I mean, that's just to me, like I said, I don't follow hockey as much, but it still seems like a huge number for him to. He's like that 720, 720 something. I think I saw the other day. Do you think he's got? Do you think he's going to get 800? Anybody? He's going to have to play. How many more years is he going to have to play to to reach? Well, that? I mean, shoot, that's the thing. Like, he's he's old, but he's not like he's hockey old. He's not other sports old yet. He's only 34, 35. So, I mean, I think he's got yeah, another yeah, solid like, four to five. Years. <laughs> yeah, he's got another solid four to five years, I'd say, of, uh, you know, like 30 plus 40 goals. I don't know. There's a lot of wear and tear on that body. <laughs> oh, no question. But, like, <laughs> was, the Stanley Cup, he lost two seasons. Like, <laughs> Sure. But, like, Zidane Chara, I mean, like, granted, they're different types of specimens. Zidane Chara is going to get uh, his AARP card next week, and he's still <laughs> out there playing, like, you know, 18, 19 minutes a game. It's unbelievable. Yeah, no, for sure. I, like, you know, respect, like, um, you know, you have more athleticism in your, you know, your eyelashes than I have in my entire existence. But, like, what hockey players do to me is, uh, you know, to me is incredible. Agreed. Agreed. Eric, if you, what, is there, would you have played hockey? Did you play a little hockey growing up? No, I didn't play any hockey. I played mostly, uh, mostly soccer and basketball growing up. Um, I stopped playing soccer when I got to high school just to kind of, Focus on basketball. Focus on basketball. I knew where my coach wouldn't let you play anymore. 
Yeah, he was a little worried about getting hurt or, or missing some time for basketball. So fair enough. It, yeah. it seemed to work out for you. It was the right decision, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, smart call. Uh, well, once again, man, seriously, uh, it, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, loved having you on. Um, genuinely mean it from the you know from the bottom of my heart. Like I, I, I really appreciate your time and and, and talking with us this evening. Um, I know it made our weeks. Um, and we're gonna, you know, um, just I guess be be appreciative for all the time you gave us. Well, awesome, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, let me. Yeah, anytime you want me on, just let me know, and we can make it happen. I'm gonna hold you to that. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it, Eric. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, Eric. Have a great night, man. All right, you too.